Okay. All right. Good morning, YouTube. Okay. So I want to get on here and talk about Arise and Live Ops, which one will work best for you or both. And so the reason why I'm doing this video, I'm not affiliated with either company. Um, I just want to put the information out there. I know with the COVID-19, uh, there's a lot of people that have lost their jobs, a lot of people that need to work at home. Um, the one that would be quickest to jump on is LiveOps, because all you do is actually um, just pay a background check fee. Um, they call it cost of doing business. A lot of companies want to do that these days, especially for work at home. It's a non-refundable fee, so if you know that you're not going to pass a background check fee um, or have a criminal record or anything like that, um, I wouldn't recommend doing it because you won't get your money back. Um, but without, you know, you having a criminal background, um, then you should be fine to work at home uh, for live ops. Um, Arise is good too, which is going to take a little bit longer to get started um, because after you decide on a client to work for, you do have to pay for their training. And then you have to pass the training. Training is usually four to six weeks. Um, usually some companies uh, may actually offer a very short training time period. Um, but that's few and few far between. Um, I don't see those coming through too often. But anyway, I uh, just want to go ahead and get on here and give you guys the information. So before beginning any job, uh, preparation is very essential. Um, to ensure the, the success of your future. And checking both websites for especially the computer requirements will save you a lot of time, hassle, and headache. Go ahead and jump on there and liveops.com, arise.com. Make sure that your home office does meet the computer requirements and also look into internet speeds that you will need. You'll have to show um, either through the computer check requirements status stage um, they'll walk you through um, how to check in your speed if you don't know how already just so you can show them the stats you'll have to show um, the specs of your computer as well um, laptops um, if you have it hardwired you should be fine and then of course the desktop i have to still show that, that desktop is set up for the requirements that you need um, some companies will require a phone line um, being a landline um, phone um, or a hardwired phone. So the basic things that you will need to work at home is computer or laptop that you can hardwire, a phone line, and then of course a quiet workspace. Um, some of them don't mind too much noise in the background, uh, but some want it to be just absolutely quiet. So it's not like you can really be having the baby on your lap um, or anything like that while you work. And sometimes if you have a quiet young one at home, um, that might be doing something else um, within the room with you that might be all right. Um, I always made sure that uh, mine was with someone that could watch them completely and fully um, just to make sure that everybody was, you know, working safe at home. And defining your objective is important too because um, if you're just wanting to make money at home, these two companies will work for you. Um, for what you're wanting to do. Um, if you're looking for something more, make sure that the jobs um, are, will help you accomplish what you're needing or wanting to do for you and your family. Um, by that, I mean, if you're wanting to move up the ladder, you can a little bit with the rise, usually to chat PF um, level from beyond that point, just really depends upon what a rise might be hiring for. And if you happen to live in the state, um, which they are in Miramar or Florida, um, so, to work actually for a rise, you have to be in that city. Um, these are all jobs that you can do at home, though. The rest of them would be. And then live ops, you're just taking phone calls, of course. Um, so, next we'll be discussing, um, I will be um, going into more detail about paid scheduling requirements, training, and going to talk in depth about details of each job and the resources you'll be provided to so work for both companies. Both companies are legit. You can make money uh, with both companies. Um, so, all right, so I know the big question is, can you make money, and if so, how much? Um, so with the RISE pay, you are paid twice a month, same with LiveOps on that note. 
no taxes taken out. You have to do that yourself because you'll be hired as an independent contractor. And then um, you'll be required to do your own taxes. You, with a rise, you may be paid by the hour per minute, whichever is greater. Summarized clients may include a small form of commission or pay by um, hour plus, you know, a certain amount per sell, depending upon which item. Now, not every client that you work for selling things will give you a per item um, option either. Um, some will, so just check the contract. They'll state in the beginning when you choose your client what all they're going to pay it for. Um, with the rise, one big thing is service fees that are deducted from every paycheck. I say big, but not really. There are about $20 a pay period. Um, Arise claims, you know, tech support they could provide along with the platform itself, making it easy for you to sign up. I'm not necessarily totally easy with Arise, though. With Live Ops, you're also paid twice per month. Tax is taken out. You'll be paid per minute of top minute. So what that means is if you're um, scheduled for 30 hours, you take phone calls for 22 minutes, you'll be paid for the 22 minutes of that 30, just for an example. Um, and you're only available while you're talking, um, taking calls, not just available for calls. That's the, what the big difference is with the rise is that you're paid for the whole time that you're available. Even if they're slow and you're not getting hours in, as long as you're showing an available status, you're getting paid. Um, invoices. With the invoices, so you, that you can see how much you're going to be making, invoices are generated a few days before your pay is deposited. Um, with LiveOps, um, LiveOps will do it to where you um, can see how much you're getting paid for shortly after you end that shift. Sometimes a little bit sooner than that, sometimes a little bit later, but usually very quickly with LiveOps. Um, with um, scheduling, both are very similar. Um, so with the rise, they do schedule you. Um, as, well, with the rise, you are scheduled. Um, your schedule is open at a certain time. That's what I was trying to say. And um, let's say that your client is Monday at 9 a.m. So you need to be ready to choose hours you a few minutes beforehand. I have noticed that sometimes you can do that on your smartphone now or your um, iPad um, or computer, laptop, whatever device you need to claim hours on. Um, if you have what's called stellar stats, um, they don't term it stellar, that was just my term, um, but meaning that if you show up on time, you're logged in on time, your calls and your the way that they grade your calls uh, are very high, um, and a customer survey response to some clients look at that as well, which I didn't really like that part of it because sometimes the clients will rate it as company in whole, like, you know, let's say if the client's only open nine to five, they might not like the client because it, they're not open at 6 p.m. You have no control over that. So just as an example for that. Uh, with LiveOps, uh, schedules are open to everybody at the same time, no matter what your stats are. I don't think that's changed. Um, now, if the client does have some peak time to where they're getting busy within that week, um, like one of the clients was a um, insurance company that you do, um, claims for like auto claims, you're just inputting the information, they call it first notice of loss line. And then um, if there's like a major weather um, situation that they might get busy and need more people, um, then they may open it up for that. If you're working for a sales line and it's getting near Christmas time or Black Friday, they may give extra hours for that too. We used to jokingly call it um, as whack-a-mole, like children's game. You'd have to be ready to be clicking on what you want. Um, I'd already know which hours I'd want to work. That way I'm not having to think when it comes to rollout time and I'm clicking on hours, you get proficient at that as well. And then um, with training, um, you have to pay a registration fee with the RISE. Um, you don't have to with live ops. And then with the rise, the training is a lot longer usually. With the rise, um, depending upon the client, but though. with the rise, usually the training is four to five weeks, uh, usually within a four hour time block. With live ops, you do a combination of the live training sessions and self paced training, depending upon what client you're servicing for or working for. Um, now with the, um, with the rise, um, both of the training is very good, um, very in-depth training, take lots of notes. 
And during the end of training um, with the RISE, you'll be scored on what's called certification calls. You have to pass your final before moving on to certification calls. Your trainer's not going to put you through certification calls if you're not ready to take calls yet. So always pay attention, take plenty of notes. They do pair you up with people to do projects throughout the training, so make sure that you, you know, try to pay attention to how different people are acting through the classes and you kind of notice um, who it might be who might be a good fit for you to pair up with and you guys can get the projects done in a short amount of time and get it completed and do good. Um, some clients do require nesting as well. That's the same with live ops too. It just really depends on the client and their specifications. Um, I'm just kind of looking through to see if I missed anything with live ops there. You do have chat rooms available for help during calls once you go live on calls. Usually both Arise and LiveOps do offer chat help. I don't can't think of anybody that doesn't um, offer chat help. You also have like a knowledge-based resource to use. And then, um, you know, if you get stuck anywhere along the way, the chat PF people are very, very good in helping you with both clients or both platforms, should I say. Enrollment, so that's the major difference too with Arise. You could either form what's called an LLC, and depending upon what state you're in, it can cost $60 or more. Um, you can join underneath somebody that's called an IBO. The big thing with IB, the IBOs are you have to trust them to pay it correctly. So I just went ahead and did the LLC myself. It was very easy to do it online. You would just go to your state's website, search join LLC, form LLC rather, and then go through the paperwork online. Um, now, with LiveOps, you don't have to form an LLC or choose to work anybody under anyone. You're an independent contractor. After you pay your background check, I um, mean, they choose a client. This is with LiveOps. Um, sometimes they've had training indefinitely delayed, um, and you have to reapply it under someone uh, under a different position. And with LiveOps, that did get delayed a lot the last time around, which is one reason why I no longer had to kept that um, back burner. Um, now, on that note, too, you'll have to be available 15 to 20 hours a week minimum. Um, when you're choosing um, which company, which client you want to work for, they do have an hour requirement. So make sure that you can do that as well. And then um, holiday requirements, some clients have that, too. And just depending upon when they get busy and whatnot. And so in short, um, do your research when choosing a work from home company. You can make money with both of these clients and companies. You can work with both of them at the same time, not necessarily logged in at the same time, um, but like say you schedule yourself to work in a RISE client in the morning, a live ops client may be available for you to work for that evening. Um, and so therefore you get 40 plus hours and you can learn to make it work for yourself. You just have to be very dependent. You have to be available to be a self-starter and just go and work and make your money. So it is possible to do both of these jobs and make money at it. Anyway, I do digress on that note. Um, so my main purpose of this video, if I didn't say it in the beginning, I'm not affiliated with either company. I wanted to come on here and give you guys information um, to help anybody out that it might help out. Um, completely up to you if you do want to. Make sure you keep checking back. I'll be getting my blog up that will have a lot of work from home information as well. It's still under construction, of course, that one is just the unpopularmom.com. I'll leave my links down below and go ahead and smash that subscribe button. And if you did like this video, or at least the content I was providing, um, and it's my first time using Zoom and doing this, I say first time, um, that's a lie, because <laughs> it took me about 10 times to get it to this point. Um, so <laughs> And that's all for a different video that I'll do with Zoom and how to do this stuff. Uh, but anyway, um, be safe, take care, even though the governors have opened the states back up. Make sure that you're social distancing, keeping your six feet apart, washing your hands, and just staying safe out there. Take care, guys. Bye.